Alright, hello everybody out there. Uh, in this video, I'm going to review my experience with the new or newish Pearson View online proctoring process uh, and the application that they use to deliver the exams called OnView. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chris Ray. I'm with InfoSec for Humans, where I help you level up your information and cybersecurity careers. All right, so I'm going to get right into this. Um, this morning I took an NSE 5 exam, um, passed it. Good job, me. Yay. Um, but uh, I wanted to make a video about my experiences with the Pearson View Online Proctoring because uh, it's relatively new for Fortinet. It's only been around a month or two. Um, it's probably been available a while for other exams, but uh, I have a feeling that this is here to stay. Uh, regardless of COVID, I, I got a feeling... Driving to the exam testing centers uh, and taking up physical space, which costs money, uh, is, is going to be going away because this process is so smooth uh, and they have enough controls around it to, to verify the integrity of the testing experience. So getting right into it. First things first, if you want to do this, here's what you need to do. You need to find out if your exam is even offered in the online proctoring. Uh, for Fortinet exams, I know that they are. There's a bunch of others, but I'm not gonna say that you can always do this. You need to find out if the exam that you wanna take is available in an online proctoring. Second, once you figure that out, you've scheduled your exam, you've paid your upfront fees, uh, you're registered, they're gonna give you the option to run a, a system test. And the system test uh, consists of uh, downloading the OnView application, um, They'll test your system to make sure you have a microphone, uh, make sure you have a webcam. They're going to then make sure that your internet speed is sufficient, and they don't define what that means, but uh, I have to assume anything more than a, a couple megs is going to be sufficient. You know, They just want the clear audio and, and, and video during the, the exam process. Uh, so definitely knock that out ahead of time. They're going to remind you once you register to do it, but then I think they'll send a reminder email a couple days ahead of time as well. Uh, do not leave it for the morning of or the day before. Do this well ahead of time. Whatever technical problems you're going to run into, you'll run into when you do the test because the test is the exact same application you use when you download and run it for the exam on the day of. So you've got your uh, registration done. You've got your, your system test completed. You're studying, you're studying, you're studying, you're preparing for the exam. Then on the day of, here's my advice to you. Log in to the Pearson View website, the exact same place that you log in to schedule your exam. Log in there and wait until 30 minutes before your exam starts. If you log in before 30 minutes, uh, you'll see your exam, but you won't be able to click begin. Uh, at, at 30 minutes before the exam, a little blue button pops up. You have to refresh your page and you can click begin exam. Now, when you click begin exam, it's not actually starting the exam. It's just beginning the registration process. And the registration process does take... 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, depending on what kind of hurdles you run into. So factor that in, show up a half hour early, complete the registration process. Uh, and the registration process consists of, you put your cell phone number in, they send you a text, there's a link in the text, you click the link, takes you to a website, and the website runs, and then you, um, you, you download, uh, or sorry, you run the application, at which point it asks you to take pictures. One of them is going to be a selfie. They want your beautiful face in there. Uh, two of your ID. One will be the front of the ID. One will be the back of the ID. Uh, and then they want four more pictures, at least four more. One's going to be your workstation, your work area where you're working. The other is going to be what's behind you, uh, what's on your left, and then what's on your right. And that's where it gets a little weird because you're, you know, you're inviting a stranger into your home, your home office from whoever they are, uh, probably halfway around the world. Um, and it, it just feels a little weird. But if you can handle that and get over it, the option of taking this exam at home is well worth it, you know, to reduce stress elsewhere. Uh, so that's the that's the confirmation, the registration process, uh, at which point once you've done that, It'll tell you on your phone, go back to the application you've downloaded called OnView, click refresh, and you're put into a queue. At that point, you're in line, you're waiting for a human, a test administrator to come along and verify the information that you've put into the, uh, into the system so far. Um, at this point, I should point out that there's, for communication to this test administrator, there's three channels of communication. There's like an IM that's built into the application. Uh, it pops up and it'll, it'll tell you their name and your name and you can IM them. Uh, the other way is, is they'll try to use the webcam and the microphone uh, to talk to you if, if they want to have a call. And it'll tell you call coming in. So uh, if you use speakers, you know, turn that down so you don't get a ton of echo. If you use headphones, put them on. 
Uh, and then finally, if they can't communicate with you effectively through those two channels, they will call you on your cell phone. So make sure at this point in time that your cell phone's not in airplane mode uh, or turned off or out of sight or out of, out of reach. You'll still need it just in case they want to get a hold of you that way. So that's the... That's the process up to this point. Um, and like I said, it can take 10, 15 minutes. It will take 10, 15 minutes. It could take a little bit longer if they have questions. Um, just some tips, uh, no hats. I always forget. So I have to only imagine that my hair is like crazy in these videos and the proctors get to see my crazy hair. Uh, no watches, um, no study materials, no pens, no paper, no books, no water, um, no smoking devices, whatever the hell that might mean. Um, they, they want your desk clean and clear. There's no pictures with text. Uh, and they will uh, you know, ask you to pick up your webcam and move it around. And they'll really uh, uh, interrogate your working situation to make sure, you know, again, to, to keep the integrity of the exam taking process as high as possible. They, they, they want to do this. And you should be willing to do this with them because you want the, the exam to be worth something. If they let anybody take it at home and cheat, then that exam's worthless and nobody's going to want it. So uh, at that point, they'll tell you it's complete. Thanks for signing up. Thanks for registering, etc. Hey, good luck on your exam today. I'm going to release your exam now, uh, at which point they, they disconnect. You can close the IM. They'll probably be talking to you through chat. And you'll see a little thing down there that says begin exam in the application. Uh, once you click begin exam, take a deep breath. You don't actually begin your exam. You're going to work through the standard stuff, signing your non-disclosure agreement, reading the fine print, that sort of thing. There's a couple pages of that. I have to imagine every organization's just a little bit different in what they make you sign before you actually begin the, the exam process. Uh, but after that, then you do begin your exam process, which I don't want to get into because like I said, the NDAs, um, I, I, I don't want to get into the, the details of the exam. I want to get into what's actually like taking a proctor, proctored exam at home. So that's what this is. Um, you take your exam, you, you complete it, you click finish. The application will tell you you've completed it. It'll ask you to take a survey. I never do. Who wants to do that? You can close it at that point, your webcam, turn it around, put a cover over it, microphones off, whatever. You're done. You don't need to interact with them. Once your, once your registration process is complete, unless they need to interrupt you during the exam, um, which they did with me, unfortunately today, you don't need to interact with them anymore. So a quick note on that. If for some reason they need to contact you during the exam, there's two things I want you to remember. These are important for anybody. Um, one, just, you know, hey, answer their questions. For me, I forgot to take my watch off and the proctor that started my exam, the administrator, they didn't see it. So when somebody else seen it, they jumped in and said, hey, can you take your watch off, put it somewhere out of, out of sight, on the floor, whatever. By the way, can you show us your hands? And uh, at first I was like, my hands, what's that got to Whatever, here's my hands. They're like, cool, thanks. Um, good luck, can continue on your exam. And remember, they're not singling you out. They're not trying to give you a hard time. They're just trying to uphold the integrity of the exam taking process, which I can completely appreciate that because I want this process to continue. I don't want to be driving to exam testing centers. This is nice. So work with them. Don't let it fluster you. Get right back into the exam and, and pass that exam that you came there to do. So that's, that's kind of my take on this. Um, I think... I think other people feel the same way, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments what your experiences have been. Uh, or if you haven't taken this yet, ask me some questions. It's fresh in my memory. It'll be a while before I take another one online. So uh, the sooner you ask, the better. Again, my name is Chris Ray. I'm with InfoSec for Humans, where I help you level up your information security and cybersecurity careers.